yes, it's time. Time to replace that creaky old spinning platter hard drive with a brand new state-of-the-art solid state drive like the venerable Samsung 860 EVO 1 terabyte drive. In this video, I'm going to show you everything you need to do to get your own hard drive replaced with a solid state drive for your PlayStation 4, and it all starts right now. Hey there, if it's your first time here, my name is Blaine, and my channel is all about helping you get the most out of your video game experiences. If you like original content about restorations, repairs, mods, product reviews, and other great video game content, smash that subscribe button and ring the bell so you don't miss out. Let's get your hard drive upgraded in your PlayStation 4. And make sure to stay to the end of the video to find out exactly how much faster that solid state drive is over the original drive with a complete set of read and write speed tests. Before you get gung-ho and rip the hard drive out of your PlayStation 4, you need to know which version of the official firmware you have on your console so you know what to download and restore to the new drive. In the PlayStation 4 menu, scroll over until you get to Settings and select it with the X button. From here, scroll down to near the bottom and select System with the X button. Inside System, the first choice that you're going to have is System Information. Select that with the X button to find out what version of the official firmware you're using. In this case, this console is on version 6.72 which makes it a jailbreakable PS4 and I intend to keep it that way. I'm going to show you how to get both the official most up-to-date firmware from Sony and a backwards compatible version of firmware that you can install on your console if you don't want to go with the official version. And be certain to back up any application save data, user profiles, trophies, or any other information on your PlayStation 4 that you want to preserve when you swap from the current drive to the new one. Now you can safely power down your PlayStation 4. A quick note about the update blocker from the Jailbreak website. If you've run this before, it's not going to be a problem when you go to add the official firmware back onto your new drive because the update blocker is actually just a pair of small files stored on your local hard drive. When you put the new drive in, they won't be there. Here are two great websites for getting official firmware for your PlayStation 4 and they're both linked in the description below. The first one is the PlayStation website from Sony. When you scroll down on the page, you're actually going to have two choices here. You're going to have an upgrade and a reinstall option. What you want, since you're putting in a brand new hard drive, is the reinstall option on the right. Make sure to download this file so that you can get the entire operating system to put on a USB stick and put back onto your new hard drive. And for legacy official firmware, darksoftware.xyz. No, no, it's not the dark web you keep hearing about. It's a fantastic group of PlayStation gamers and modders, and an excellent archive and repository for PlayStation content. If you need to install a version of the official firmware other than the most recent one, this is a great place to go. As you see here, they have all of these versions of recovery software available for download. Remember that in the PS4 that I showed you at the beginning, it's on version 6.72. So if you go higher than that under current conditions, what you'll find out is you won't be able to jailbreak your PS4 anymore. So it's important to select the right firmware. Download the version of the official firmware installer that you need to match with your PlayStation 4 or update your PlayStation 4 to the version you want. Just be aware that the PlayStation 4 official firmware is not backwards downgradable. You can only go with the version that's currently on the console or higher. In your downloads folder, you'll either have a file called ps4update.pup or a file like this that has ps4update, some information about which version it is, .pup. If that's the case, then rename the file and call it ps4update.pup. Just as a quick note, make sure you spell update with the E as older versions like the PS3 used UPDAT without the E. PS4s need the E. Select the file and copy it. You'll need to plug in a USB drive that's either in FAT32 if it's less than 32 gigabytes, or XFAT if it's larger than 32 gigabytes. Create a folder on the root of the USB drive and name that folder PS4. All of the folder names you create moving forward need to be in all caps. Inside the PS4 folder, create a new folder. 
and name the new folder update, U-P-D-A-T-E, and make sure to do it in all caps. Then go into the update folder and paste ps4update.pup right here. That's all you need to transfer over to your USB drive. From here, you can go ahead and close out your file browser and safely eject your USB drive from your PC. Once the USB drive has been safely ejected from your PC, let's go ahead and put the solid state drive into your PlayStation 4. I'm putting the Samsung 860 EVO solid state drive into an original PlayStation 4, but I'll also show you how to get the hard drives out of the Slim and the PS4 Pro models. For the original, just slide this cover. It comes right off the top, just slide it to the left. There's one single screw at the front where the drive's located that you have to take out. Use a Phillips head screwdriver to take this screw out and set it off to the side. Make sure to keep this screw separated because there are going to be four other screws to take out once you get the drive out. All you have to do at this point to free the drive from the PS4 is just grab right from the front and slide it out. And to get the hard drive out of the PlayStation 4 Slim or PlayStation 4 Pro, it's located on the back side of the console. There's a small plastic door that you need to remove from the back side of the console. Let me show you how that's done. When you're looking at the console from the back side, that door is at the bottom right corner of the console. It's very easy to remove. You can just reach a fingernail into one side of the door and just gently pry up and it should come right off the back without a great deal of resistance. If you meet a lot of resistance when you try to take it out, be very careful because you could break it. With this Pro model, the easiest way to get to the screw is just simply flip the PlayStation over. Then you'll have easy access to the screw that you need to remove in order to get the hard drive out. Again, it's just a Phillips screwdriver to take out this screw. With the screw removed, the Pro model can be a little bit fussy to get the drive out of, but grab whatever metal that you can reasonably reach and pull out. With the Slim, it's pretty straightforward as there's a ribbon on it to get it out. There are four screws that hold the hard drive into the hard drive bay. Using a Phillips head screwdriver, take each of these screws out. Just make note that the screws actually have rubber shock mounts put between the screws and the drive bay itself and make sure not to tear these or lose these as they help align the screws at the proper depth and help reduce vibration. With the Samsung 860 EVO, it's pretty darn easy to figure out which way it goes. The Samsung logo on the solid state drive faces up. Slide it into the drive bay with the logo facing up and the SATA port facing out. It's going to be similar for just about any other solid state drive that you choose to put into the drive bay. Then secure it into place with the four screws that you removed from the old drive. When you go to put these screws back in, I would strongly recommend putting them in by hand first to prevent cross threading and to make sure that the drives align properly. Also make note that the drive may need to go up and down a little bit in the bay and not just necessarily side to side to get perfect alignment. Once you have all four of those screws initially started in by hand, tighten them down with a Phillips head screwdriver. Just don't over tighten or you could run the risk of breaking the drive housing on the new SSD drive. Tighten until they're snug, but don't over tighten. Now the drive's completely secure in the drive bay and you can put it back into your PlayStation 4. On the original PlayStation 4 model, just slide it in from the front and push it in until it sits snugly inside the SATA port inside the PlayStation 4 on the motherboard. Then grab the original screw, put it into place, thread it in by hand to get it started, and then use a Phillips head screwdriver to tighten it the rest of the way down. Once the screw is secured in place, replace the top cover by putting it on the top of the PS4 and sliding it back into place until it locks down. And on the Slim and Pro model, insert the hard drive into the bottom right corner of the console until it seats firmly in place in the SATA port on the motherboard. Then replace that screw. You can start it in by hand as necessary and then tighten it down with a Phillips head screwdriver. 
Once the hard drive secured down, flip the console back over. It just makes reinstallation of the little door on the back a little easier, as it's oriented exactly as you took it off. Just slide that cover onto the gap where you took it off, and gently press it down into place. Reconnect your console to power in the TV and plug in the PS4 controller by USB in the front. Then insert the USB drive with the software you put on it and power on your PS4 by holding the power button until the second beep to launch it in safe mode. When you see this screen, press the PS button on your PS4 controller and you'll be given this menu option to initialize PS4. Select it with the X button to continue. Your console will install the original firmware that you've selected and put on your drive directly to your solid state drive. Your PlayStation 4 will reboot several times during this installation process. Just don't interrupt it, don't cut power, and let it do its thing. You'll be greeted with the original initialization screen that you got when you first bought and set up your PlayStation 4, just like it was new right out of the box. Set up the settings as you'd like to have them on your PlayStation 4. And as an aside here, if you're planning on jailbreaking your PlayStation 4 on version 6.72 or lower, make sure that you follow the guidelines in the video that I have linked in the description and pinned in the comments to make sure that you set up those jailbreak setups properly moving forward. Once you get the PlayStation 4 main menu, there are two critical things that you want to check to make sure everything went to plan. You want to make sure that the PlayStation recognizes all of the storage available to you on your solid state drive and what version of the firmware it represents. Go to settings and select it with the X button. Then scroll down until you get to storage, select it with the X button. And as you can see here, it recognized the entire solid state drive minus the system software and the usual subtraction of megabytes and gigabytes and things that come from the conversion from 1024 to 1000, if you know what I mean. Let's make sure the system software went in with the right version number and everything is good to go. Scroll all the way down until you get to system. Then select it with the X button. Then go into system information and select it with the X button. And there you go, the system's still on version 6.72, still jailbreakable. You just wanna make sure that whatever version of the firmware you expected to find once you put it in is in fact valid. Now you can restore your save games, user information, and anything else that you'd like to your console. So how much faster is the solid state drive than the original drive? Let's find out. I formatted the original PlayStation 4 hard drive in XFAT and then put it into a SATA to USB dock to test it with the Blackmagic disk speed test software. Here's what I found. The original hard drive that came with this PlayStation 4, a 500 gigabyte spinner drive, ranked about a 93 at the upload speed and 104 for download speed. Ouch. For the SSD drive, I actually tested it before I ever even put it into the PlayStation 4. And here are the numbers that I got on the SSD Samsung 860 EVO. 381 for upload speed, and 418 for download speed. These numbers are great. It's about a 380% increase in the upload speed and over 400% increase in the download speeds. Impressive. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on great original video game content as it's posted to the channel. And check out this video here shown on screen and linked in the description and pinned comments below for more great content. I'll look forward to seeing you there on the next video.